Welcome to today's discussion segment. Today we are going to discuss Nigeria's security challenges, its implication for sustainable economic growth and development. This covers various aspects of insecurity in Nigeria, including its causes, effects, and potential solutions with a focus on local communities and nations. My name is Jennifer Ezuk, and with me is Cornel Oshakwade Adini. Sir, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, our discussion topic for today is Nigeria security challenges and its implication for sustainable economic growth and development. Sir, what is your overview of insecurity from year 2000 to date? Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. You see, uh, security and uh, development, they go hand in hand. You cannot do one without the other. So our problem has been that we've neglected one and we're facing the other. The basic responsibility of government is security and welfare. So if you leave the welfare and you face security, you won't achieve your responsibility or your goal. So over time, we've abandoned the welfare aspect of government responsibility and we have faced security, you know, with a lot of resources being pumped into security and that's why we've not really achieved what we really wanted as regards security. So that's what I would say first about the whole issue. Oh, sir, looking at what is happening, this narrow, the insecurity in the new Medjugorje Delta State, do you think that Nigeria is getting better? Not minding the money, the fund they are pumping into security to see that things will get better. Do you think we are getting better or are we still where we are? There will be little improvement. Yes, there is an improvement but we can't get it perfectly until we address the two major duties of government, security and welfare. You see, uh, the government under President Tinubu has taken the right step for now by ensuring that the local government start having their funds directly. Because this, the insecurity issue we are talking about start from the local areas, from the community. interland, from the community. And when you have the armed forces and the police, to get to those communities is not something that is uh, easy to do because of you no know, logistic aspect, the poor infrastructure and all those things. So but we have a local government that is having the resources to play with. They can now on their own you know, form up, uh, create, uh, establish vigilante groups and other groups that will assist the established security outfit, that is the police and the armed forces. So that is where to really start from. Otherwise, what we are achieving now is just, you know, we are not yet there. So for now, with that policy, mm -hmm. you believe that Nigeria will get better in terms of security? Yes, Nigeria will get better, it will improve. Though giving the uh, uh, local government some form of autonomy for now, it's a right step, but it's not yet, it's not fully the solution. Because if you look at the FAC allocation, what local government is getting today, 20%, about 20% of the resources, and that is to be shared among the 774 local government. So you find out that at the end of the day, the, the funds are not enough to really cater for both welfare aspect and security at local government level. So you meant the federal government is supposed to increase the fund, the yes. allocation given to local governments? Of yes. course, they, because that is where the development is. When you are talking of taking care of the welfare of the people, it's the local government, not federal. The federal is far. Some people cannot sit in Abuja and think they will take care of welfare of more than 200 million people. They can't achieve it. 
and you can see from the past you know system all this uh, issue of uh, what we call it uh, trader money your p and all those things they will not really achieve the, the target the target that they are you know they have in their program but if you devolve this task to local government that is where the people are they will be able to provide for the welfare and where the welfare of the people are taken care of the insecurity will reduce only very few devil among them will now go out to commit crime we uh -huh, will still engage in all these illegal activities but the majority that believe they are getting their uh, means of life from the local government will stay away from all this uh, insecurity and atrocities, and atrocities in, the in the city. So that okay. is the Okay, issue. sir. What are the principles of a good security personnel? Uh, a security personnel, the, the something is, uh, number one, it should be well trained. The training aspect should be packer and there uh, should be no, you know, this issue of compromising with training. When you have adequate training and adequate welfare, you see uh, 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 personnel in the security outfit will go out there and then protect the people who are obeying the law. We talk of the rule of law because that's the job of security outfit to protect the people that are obeying the law. So when you are well trained and your welfare is well catered for, then the other aspect is just go out there and do your job. Okay, sir, mm -hmm. what are the measures that you feel that these security personnel need to put in place to prevent crimes? Well, they have their own uh, agenda, their uh, established rule of uh, engagement, which has been stated, which is part of the training. And uh, the, the issue is that when they get out there, they want to, you know, be operating among law abiding citizens. But in a situation where those who are breaking the law are in, in large number, you know, and the resources the security outfits are getting cannot meet up with the challenges they are getting from the large number of people who are out there to break the law, then we now have these Issues. shortcomings and the security insecurity will persist. Okay, um, what do you think that we individuals or mm -hmm. citizens mm -hmm. need to do in order to tackle this in insecurity in the nation, to cope this insecurity? Like I said, the basic responsibility of an average citizen is to obey the law, respect the law, pay your tax, and then the, the local government where you reside you are there to provide information if you see anything up towards within your area you quickly report it you don't need to allow it to or you go and you know sit over it or prevent the information from getting across to the relevant uh, section that we undo the case that is just the the, the basic duty of the individuals, individuals. Okay, sir. Having experienced numerous conflicts between mm -hmm. farmers and herders in yeah. this nation, okay. what do you think should be the solution on how to handle these constant clashes? Good. I'll go back, I'll go back again to the local government. Now, we are talking of ranching. Ranching is supposed to be the primary duty of local government, at Ministry of Agric level there. Though they've created another ministry for livestock. But to me, I don't think uh, that really necessary. Ministry of Agri, there's a department there that handles livestock. That is their job. Local governments will have their own ranch. So that all these headers moving cows here and there, when they get to a local government, you direct them to the ranch. When you they enter the ranch, you start taking care of them there. The people who are moving these cows here and there are not the owners. They will go back and inform the owners that their cows are now with so, so so local government in their ranch. The owners now will now come and negotiate how the cows will be taken care of and pay some services for the local government, uh, 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 the ranch uh, handlers. So with that, each of uh, others uh, and farmers uh, clashes 
uh, uh, clash will be a thing of the past. But if the local government don't have the resources to set up a ranch that will have medical facilities, water, feeding, and those basic, you know, things for the for the livestock, then the elders will be moving their cows here and there and be entering people's farm, destroy farmlands, and the clash will continue. But sir, don't you think that those states that we have these headers mm -hmm. should create these ranches? State? Yes. You see that what I'm saying? That it's not the job of state to do most of these basic things for the people. So it's for them to community and local, local government. Like I said, they need more resources. They should be allowed to control substantial amount of their resources. So that you can hold them responsible for the basic welfare services and even for the security of the community of the areas of their or the local areas of their communities of towns and villages in their area because the police are somehow still far the armed forces they are still far before they will get to all these areas in the interland it will take time so the local government will have their own outfit that will be the first uh, responder before the main uh, established uh, security outfit will get there but if you neglect local government and you think the armed forces, police will take care of the whole country, the country is very large. Yeah. An area of more than 996,000 something you know, square kilometer. It's a big area for just one established uh, 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 security outfit to handle. But with the local government that already established all over the countries, they take care of their immediate area and all the problems in the country will, stop, will be solved. The local government A is taking care of their area, local government B is doing the same thing, local government C, before you know, the whole country is secured. Okay, sir. How do you think that we can cope all the remedies mm -hmm. to handle this high level of courtism in our various higher institutions? Well, the courtism aspect has to do with the background, the home training, the parents need to do a lot, and it's still boils down to welfare aspect too. You meant grassroots sensitization? Good. Because uh, people who, most of these are our students going to, to, going to school, they don't have much they are getting from their parents. So when they get to school, they mingle with friends and colleagues that will introduce them to this uh, courtism. courtism and because they, because they know that they will get one or two favors from them. So with that, it's going to be difficult to address. But if you are talking, if you really talk about their welfare and allow local governments to be very active, insecurity, courtism, violent crimes, terrorism, will be reduced. reduced. Yes, it will be reduced. Though you still have some elements that, because they say out of every 12, there's only one, there's one to that. So no matter how, you know, you struggle to take care of the welfare of these people. So among them, we still go ahead the to see, thing. yes, we still commit crime. But at least uh -huh. when it is minimal. When it is minimal, then the security outfit can uh, handle it. it. Okay. So mm. do you think the high rate of unemployment mm -hmm. and poverty in the nation is part of the reason that we have high rates of insecurity? Of course, it's part of it. We are talking about unemployment here and there. And uh, you know, I just have to say this because over time, government, Nigerian government, for example, in fact, majority of African countries, the government are trying to run their nation like Western nations. The Western nations we are trying to copy, they are already there. The economy is up there. Their local currency is the international currency that the third world country are looking for to do business. So if we go, go ahead to start selling all our assets, privatizing everything, our government will be broke. When government decide to be out of business, because some people say government uh, should not do business, they should just set up the environment to make, it doesn't, you can only do that in Western world, in a developed world, where they can decide to sell all their assets and then start to rely on uh, taxes. 
because the taxes they are getting is the it's is the international currency that you and I are looking for to do business. So they can never be broke. And if they are broke, they can easily go and print some money for themselves. The money they are printing is the same international currency. So they can afford not to do any business. But in our own case, if we decide to follow them, our local currency is Naira. If you print more Naira today, you cannot use it for international business. It will end up losing value. Just like what we are having now. And it will continue to affect the nation. And it will, be, it will continue to affect the nation's industry will close. People will lose their jobs. And at the end of the day, unemployment will be there. So we need to address the economic problem you know, from a point of view of facing the reality on the ground, not what the Western world is doing. And then we want to say, ah, in the Western world, they have uh, business, they have uh, privatization, they have this, they have that. We government must be, for example, you're talking of agriculture now. Government cannot control the price of food because government does not have farm. The farmers who produce this food, they pass through a lot to get this food out. So you cannot come and tell them now to sell the food at a lower price when they knew what they passed through to produce this food. So government themselves now must be at the forefront of agriculture, like a local government. Local government, like I said, the lands belong to them. You should be empowered to cultivate the land. If it is beans that will do well in your area, produce the beans, lose, use all the available, what do you call it, arable land in your area okay. to produce that beans so that you can now control price. Government can now control price. Okay, beans should be social price. But if you allow the farmers to be doing that, you can't tell them to sell their food at a lower price, where they know how much they pay for fertilizer, how much they pay to hire uh, laborers that will treat the land. So all those things we must understand. So you meant in order to cope this and help mm -hmm. to reduce unemployment, that government should invest in agriculture? Invest at local government level, not federal. It's not the job of federal to go into farming. Federal don't have land. We should stop deceiving ourselves. Federal government should assist local government, identify the right crop that will do well in their land, and assist them to produce that food. They can carry the other farmers along while they are cultivating the land, they add the other farmers too. But they should be at the forefront of food production. But sir, don't you think that even if the local government can create something like cooperative, mm -hmm. fund this cooperative mm -hmm. for farmers to do well, invest and do commercial farming, that it will still help? Just a part of it. When you go and fund this cooperative you are talking about, many of them get this money, they used to go and build a house. They used to go and marry a second wife. They used to go and, you know, uh, uh, do some other things for their immediate needs. Some used to go and pay school fees. But if local government on their own get this money, procure the equipment for mechanized farming, employ graduates that just finished from schools, we have a lot of everybody men out there. Give them equipment, let them start cultivating, put them on salaries. By the time we produce this food in large quantity, with other farmers too that you have assisted, you buy their own food items with your own, send it to the market. You can now fix price. So this issue of food problem will be solved. It will improve people's welfare. Security will be, redu security will be reduced. That's how it is. Okay. It's practical. <laughs> if you just say that you are, you know, farmers, 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 look at the billions that where it lives under agro borrowers uh, program, under the former regime. Where are all the money? Where are they? Where are the food? Billions that they lose. But if those billions have been tied to the local government Ministry of Agri and say you have this land, rice can do well in your place, then start producing this rice. Get the equipment. We will not be having problem of uh, high and it's reduced uh, uh, food cost. Um, sir, uh, what about the, um what do you think the federal government should do to reduce the trend of insecurity in our nation or community? Like that's what I just said. One of the ways to improve it is improve the welfare of people. We waste money on, you know, irrelevances. We can buy cheap, can build houses. Let's start. You see? The grassroots. Yes. The taking care of the welfare of the people. If the people know that. They are getting something like in all this 
uh, Western nation. If you are out of job today, you are on government support. Government is giving you stipend every month or uh, regularly to maintain yourself so that you will not be nuisance, you will not be a problem to the society. All these uh, countries, they are thinking of that. But in our own case, we have abandoned our people. Today, I cannot see any services that government is providing to people. Okay. Um, so it is so bad. Well, what are the roles that you feel that parents should play in order to cope or checkmate this insecurity in this nation? Parents will do their own. Their own, take care of your children, send them to school. When they become 18 years, they are adults. They go on their own. They become government uh, <laughs> uh, children. Because at that age, a parent that is struggling to survive will not you know, uh, be run up and down for the children. The children now, you see that's why in a, a developed nations, I pray we'll get there. When you give birth today, government is already paying you for that, your child. So that you use it to, you know, sustain, take care of the, take care of the child. See, when the child now gets to 18, it's on its own. Government too, you know, if you, if you have job, they will, you, you, you will be getting more. If you don't have job, they give you some welfare packages. So the parents now will relax. The little money the parents are getting, they are used to take, 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 to take care of themselves. But in our own setting, somebody will still be in university. Parents will still be running up and down to pay school fees. You finish school, no job. You are still under your parents. So with that, the parents will have limited control over that type of a child that they cannot give full support. So the child will go to do other things to help Itself. That's the basic problem we are just having, and it's not the job of federal government, it's local government. That's why I'm proposing that local government need more funds so that they can undo these perennial problems. Okay. Uh, so, um, how can we support citizens mm -hmm. that we are already affected by this insecurity or that are passing through trauma? That is the job of government institutions. You see, before you and I were born, government had been existing. Yes. And like I said, the basic job of government is security and welfare. Institutions to provide security has been established. The armed forces and the police, they know their job to ensure that the country is secured. Police give internal security, armed forces provide external security and support the police when they are overwhelmed. Now, when you talk of welfare, it's all encompassing. You're talking of quality education, uh, health care, you know, uh, water, affordable food stuff, infrastructure, those are, those, are, those are under welfare. So when they have failed to provide the welfare services to the people, we have these problems. So those who have issues now, Minister of uh, Works is there to provide houses for us, but they building the houses. No. Minister of Health is there. You go to government hospital now, you will not see much from there. The Health care from government hospital is not to write home about. You go to public school, zero. People now rush to private school to get their children trained. So the government institutions are dead. And from federal, state to local government level, they are just not there. If by the time we start reviving these government institutions, especially at local government level, all the issue of welfare will be taken care of. Like I said, Security and welfare goes simultaneously. So if you don't take care of the two at the same time, you have problems. Now we are talking of security now, spending billions and to the security will, insecurity will still be there because the welfare aspect has not been taken care of. So the people you are trying to secure will be the one that will give you problems because they don't have food to eat, they don't have drinking water, they don't have health care. So they will still give you insecurity. Mm -hmm. uh, will decentralization of policing mm -hmm. be a measure, a good measure to tackle this insecurity? Of course. Of course. I, I, I even came up with a new constitution for Nigeria and I've submitted it to the National Assembly. I will still go and uh, give a public hearing very soon. You have to develop, uh, uh, allow uh, uh, police, policing it should be decentralized to the local government. In fact, to the state, 
They are proposed for a regional government. They have it at the region. They are deployed to the local government. And they will be able to work with local government authority. Local government authority having some vigilantes that they've set up. They work together with the police that are deployed to the area. And they secure the area. So, but if you allow it at the federal, though we still have them all over, deployed all over the areas, but the control, the administration and the, and the uh, uh, logistic from federal down to the local government is not there. You go to the police station in the local government uh, uh, setting now. The DPO will tell you that he has nothing to run the police station. You see their vehicle. No, no fuel uh, to move around, to go and uh, attend to some problems, to security, insecurity in the area. They can't move around. So that problem is there if the federal is still controlling it. Because the, the, the resources are not really going down to where it's supposed to be. Oh, sir, federal government is releasing huge amounts of money fund for this secret. Well, you know our setup because of lack of basic services from uh, government institutions. Anybody now that comes into the government uh, arena is trying to do something to help himself. Let me just say it mildly. People are entering government establishments to go and make money for themselves, to build house, to do this, do that for them, because they are not getting the basic services from government institutions that are supposed to provide. Take electricity now. You need to buy generator, fuel it every day, and you know the cost of fuel now. You take uh, 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 water. If you don't have money to do borehole, you will be looking for Merua that will be supplying water every day. So all those basic things are not there. So when you enter into any government uh, institution, you look at your salary. It's not much. So you will go into unholy activities. So you want to help yourself. You want to be corrupt. So that is why the issue of corruption so is just it's there. it's not that the money is not being released, but it's... The money is being released, but due corruption to... Corruption in the system. Yes, because people don't get the basic services from government institutions. That's just the problem we have in Nigeria. So how can we secure our home with all these smart technology? All these... Technologies, uh, smart technologies. Okay. Well, we have this 21st century. We need to catch up with the developed world. Technology now is all over. You see it, uh, closed circuit uh, camera, you know, installed in most houses, in most establishments. You just have to do it because, like I said, a lot of people are out there without those basic services. And they are looking for means to commit crime, to rob you, to rob you of your property, to steal anything that... So with technology now, you fix all those uh, uh, closed circuit, uh, something in your area, and with that, you can easily monitor your environment and report any movement that is uh, termed to be illegal. Okay. Mm. Um, apart from CCTV camera, what mm. are other gadgets that one can use to secure his or her home? Uh, if, you are, if you have the uh, license to carry weapons, we can, but most of us in this country today, most people don't have that license to carry arms. So you don't cannot just carry weapons and say you're defending your house. Apart that's the only thing you can just do with the closed circuit uh, camera, put uh, electric uh, wire fence, you know, on your fence at your gate. But how many people really? It's only those rich people that can do that. An average person can't afford all those things. But the current economic uh, situation now in the country. Okay, so, so what are the ways that one can easily stay safe while working alone at night? If you are working alone at night, you let your people know where you are. Your phone should be on in case of uh, any crisis or any problem that you encountered at night. But the most important thing is that let people know where you are and you have a means of raising an alarm where you are working. So that if you are attacked, you can easily raise alarm for people around to know that uh, something is going wrong there. But if you are working in a place where you are just there alone and 
no form of raising alarm or nobody knows that you are there. Any bad thing can happen and before you know, if you understand, the story will be different. So the important thing is that find a means of raising an alarm and let people know the, the exact place. Let one or two people know where you are or where you are going or where you are walking. All right, it's a nice time having you here Thank on Shakwadi. Yeah. Thanks for being part of today's program. Okay.